Hey everybody. So in this video, they ask us to write an equation that could represent the function with the given zeros. So here are the zeros that they give us. So we have plus or minus root six and we have two i. So as discussed in a prior video, when you have plus or minus here, we need to know that there are two roots. There is x equals positive root six and we have x equals negative root six. Now we have the two i. So we have x equals 2i. Now, one thing we need to think about is where do the i's come from? So we know they come from the square root of a negative number. So if I had something like this, if I had x squared plus 4 equals 0, let's say I tried to solve this. This gives me x squared equals negative 4, and when I solve by the square root, I have x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. Now, this cannot simplify. It is impossible to take the square root of a negative number unless that number is negative 1. So that's why they always say bring out the negative. So if I do that, I have x equals plus or minus i root 4 because the square root of negative 1 is i, that imaginary number. Now I can easily take the square root of 4 it's 2. So here I have plus or minus 2i. So the reason that I go through with this is so that we can make the point. Even though they only give you one i or one imaginary root, you must remember that you must include the conjugate. If they give you x equals 2i, we must remember that x equals negative 2i is also a root because Imaginary numbers come from taking the square root of negative values. So now that we have this, we can create linear factors to establish our polynomial. So we're going to take this square root of 6 and bring it over here, and that's going to be x minus the square root of 6. That's our first factor. The next one will be x plus the square root of 6, and then here, this is going to be x minus 2i, and we have x plus 2i. Now, in order to create the polynomial that gives us these zeros, we need to multiply all of this together. So we'll start by multiplying here, and then we'll multiply here. So we have x times x, that's going to give us x squared, x times root 6, so we have plus x root 6. This x times negative root 6 is negative x root 6. And then here you have the negative square root of 6 times the positive square root of 6, and that is the negative square root of 36. So now we can combine like terms. These will go away. So I am left with x squared and we know the square root of 36 is 6. So this is x squared minus 6. So you may have even caught this earlier before that this is a difference of squares. The first terms are the same and the last terms are the same. The only thing that's different are the signs in between. So that makes this a difference of squares. So you could have just multiplied the first terms and the last terms. Just like here. If we foiled this and we distribute, our middle terms are going to go away because we ran into the same thing we did over here. The first terms are exactly the same. The last terms are exactly the same. The only thing different are the signs in between. So we could go ahead and write this out. x times x is x squared. And negative 2i times positive 2i is negative 4i squared. Now, here, we shouldn't have any i's when we're multiplying. So let's think about this. What is the value of i squared? Well, i squared is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. So here, this would just be negative 1. So now what we have is negative 4 times negative 1. This gives us a positive 4. So the two terms that I'm multiplying together are x squared minus 6 and x squared plus 4. So that negative 4 times the negative 1 is what made it positive. Now I can multiply these together. 
x squared times x squared is going to give me x to the fourth. x squared times 4 is going to give me 4x squared. Negative 6 times x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 6 and positive 4 is going to give me negative 24. So I'll combine my like terms here, and I'll write out my polynomial. The function, which will give me these roots, is going to be x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 24. And that's it. One quick thing to always note, however many zeros you have at the beginning, so here we have one, two, three, four. However many zeros are present, your final answer should have that number as its highest degree. So let's say you have four zeros, but when you are finished, this were five, or it were three, or really any number besides four. We've done something wrong in our algebra, and we would have to go back and check. So that's just something to keep in mind. Well, that's going to be all for this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and we'll see you all in the next video.